Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a survival horror game in Unity and welcome to episode 32. In this tutorial we are going to add in the ability to open or rather unlock this door when we pick up our key, build a little bit more of this and then test pretty much the whole sequence of what we have so far. Don't forget to click on subscribe button and click that bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in the series and indeed everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So, up until this point, we've been able to break this pot over here. And when we do, out of it comes a key. And that key, obviously, is very important. We pick it up, and it basically just says, yep, perfect. Let's, uh, yeah. So, let's open up the key pickup script that we have attached to our trigger. That is going to be crucial to enabling our door to actually be open so we can set a specific value in here to allow ourselves to say well actually now we have the key so we need to do something else with our other door so what i'm going to do just for now is i am going to open this script and we're going to locate a certain area where we can actually place this line of code to say that we have um, something in our inventory. So ultimately we're going to create a very, very, very basic inventory script within this tutorial. And when I say basic, I literally mean a, probably three lines of code just to make sure that um, it knows that we have the key picked up. So as it loads up, we get down to where we say pick up key. That's all good and well. So yeah, we pick it up using the action key. So here, is where we're going to say, yes, we can add this to our inventory. So I'm gonna add the extra line there. So we've got that in, uh, in place, ready? Let's go back to uh, Unity and let's go to our scripts folder. And let's add um, a script specifically for storing that information. So create C Sharp script. And I'm gonna call this global inventory. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. So realistically, I don't think we particularly need to have too much to this script. Um, the only thing we really need, because we're going to build upon this at some point during the series anyway. But what we're going to do is we're going to have that key pickup script tell this script that we now have the key. So in order to do so, we're going to say public static. And I guess it doesn't really matter what this could be. We could have this as um, an integer, a float. It could be a bool. It could be anything, just as long as we are able to change whatever it is to something different so the other door can detect that we have it. So in this case, I'm going to have it as a bool, but we may change it at some point later in the series, like I say. Uh, but you'll see how this works as we go along. So public, static, bool, and let's have first door key although it's not the first door technically it's the first one that would require a key uh, by default we'll have that equal false semicolon and we don't really need anything else within the script but just for clarity's sake just so i can see it update in the inspector panel itself i'm going to have public bool internal door key semicolon and that's probably going to be removed at some point uh, let's get rid of the annotations and void start because we don't need them <clears throat> and in void update i'm just going to put internal door key didn't actually mean to put a double k there equals first door key semicolon uh, i'm not going to have that equal to anything by default i'm just going to leave it as its own um, variable so let's save that script head back into Unity, and I'm just going to attach that uh, global inventory script to uh, a random game object. So game object, create empty, and let's have that at the top, somewhere there. And I'm going to rename this to, let's call it the same, global inventory. And let's add that global inventory script to that object and obviously as always uh, we know by now if it's static it's not going to appear here that's why we have that internal one just so we can see the change occur 
Now that also means that we need to go back to our key pickup script and in that extra line that we placed, we can now put global inventory dot, and there it is, first door key equals true, semicolon, save that script. So that's now said in our inventory, yes, we have that key. So let's head back to Unity, wait for it to compile, shouldn't have any errors, perfect. So that key obviously is for this door right here. <clears throat> now the door itself does have an animation. Um, divide anim. Don't think that animation is gonna be of much use. <laughs> However, the um, actual door, if we remember something we did, oh God, it was good few tutorials ago where we animated the door. Um, obviously, we have the ability to move the door, so we're going to need to create a quick animation for that door as well. <clears throat> so, um, same thing we did with the other door. Let's right click, add a 3D object cube, and I'm just going to shrink that down because it is way too big. So that's taken out of there into the door itself, and let's reduce this to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. And again, it doesn't really matter too much about the cube because the cube eventually becomes obsolete because it is, well, I say obsolete, obsolete is probably the wrong word to use, uh, but invisible maybe. Um, 0 0.01 and 0 0.01. So again, this is our hinge. So hinge, hing. <laughs> I didn't mean to put hing, I wanted to put hinge. And so the door obviously attaches to this hinge. There's obviously other ways of animating doors as well. It's you know entirely up to you. If you're used to animating doors a different way, stick with that way. Uh, let's turn the mesh renderer off and let's attach our door to the hinge. Oh, yep, yeah, of course. I forgot we need to unpack the prefab and then do it. No, I'm not quite sure why that was ever added into Unity. It's um, one of the things that I just felt kind of didn't really serve a purpose. So there's our door animating. Obviously, you need to go a bit more refined with that. Um, we need to place that in there as well. Obviously, so that moves. There we go. Perfect. So now let's quickly animate that door. Uh, animations, and do you know what? I'm going to create a new folder at this point. Try and tidy things up a bit. Uh, we'll call this mansion anims. So anything exclusive to this mansion area that we're creating goes in here, i.e. this door. Uh, I'm going to rename the door as well, as a matter of fact, just to say uh, first key door. So let's take our hinge and let's animate. Create it, and new animation will rename to first key door, save and record. Let's set that first keyframe. Obviously everything here is gonna be done via the Y uh, rotation. So let's set that as zero. And I want this to open over the course of maybe 90 seconds, 90 seconds. <laughs> so 90 frames, I mean, not 90 seconds. So frame 90. So by frame 90, we expect our door to be about there, which is good enough. So let's stop that animation. Let's go back to the project window and turn off loop time. Uh, press play <coughs> and the door. Perfect. So if we now go to the animator for it, for our hinge, uh, doing that so let's get rid of if you've got that just like I have then get rid of that not quite sure why that is but let's add the first key door and just make sure the animation does indeed work for the door it does not our door is not playing ball have I, I may have animated the wrong thing here <laughs> oh dear I have let's get rid of that Let's get rid of the animator on there. Let's add the animator onto... Yeah, this has not quite gone as I expected. Not to worry. Animator on there. And let's add that onto there. 
I said add onto there. There we go. So let's try that one more time. <clears throat> and it is not doing it. Why are you not doing it? This is not being fair to me. Okay, so the hinge itself. What if I take it out of there, place it there, out of the door frame, just its own object. It still doesn't work. Why do you not work? Okay, so obviously this... Oh, okay. <laughs> oh dear, don't you just love it when this happens? Okay, so I'm going to start that again, basically. It's decided that it does not want to be nice to me. So I've, I've it's been a bit silly. So let's try that again with the hinge. <laughs> let's go to animation, create the animation, first key door. You can by all means leave a dislike for this silliness. Uh, first keyframe, let's set uh, as zero. And so by the 90th frame, we're setting uh, the rotation on the Y to whatever, about that. Uh, let's stop that there. Let's set that loop time off. And we do have our animator attached now. <clears throat> so let's check our door opening. There we go. <laughs> so we have that in place. So let's go to our animator. Let's right click, create an empty state and right click on the empty state and set as default. Now, obviously the reason we do that is because we only want this to play when we trigger it. So everything is in place now. We now need to go to the lock door trigger and let's open up the lock door script. So. In here, we have the open door bit and uh, the audio source plays that locked door, which is down here. And the way we're going to do this now is we need to get this to reference a particular uh, part of the global inventory script, which is that bool. So what we do is on the locked door script, uh, we have the start coroutine door reset. So here, let's have if, and it's going to be global inventory dot first door key equals false. Then we do this bit right here. And then we'll have else open curly bracket. And in here, we need to reference or rather add in the variable for that hinge that we created for the door. So public game object and uh, what can we call it? Let's just call it um, first, let's put a space there, first key door semicolon. And here we'll put first key door dot get component. And in spiky brackets, let's simply call this, um, what is it, animator? I have to think then. <laughs> animator, up oh, close bracket, dot play. And in brackets and quotes, the name of our animation. So I am going to actually copy the name of the animation so I don't misspell it. Quote, close bracket, semicolon. And after a second or so, I am going to set the entire uh, box collider as off. So I'm going to have that once again, just in case. I, I don't see any reason why it would fail. Uh, in fact, we'll just have a split second for that one. So we can have, have time for the door to fully open. So maybe 0.9, 1.1F, because we had the um, animation as one and a half seconds, didn't we? So save that. Let's head back into Unity, press play. And now uh, we're going to see a glitch we've seen before while we do this as well. I'll explain a bit more in a second. Door won't open, so let's pick up the key. And now let's try and open the door. Oh, of course, Jimmy's been silly once again. We didn't actually assign the hinge. It would help. So we know the door won't open when we go over to it. So let's take the key and the door should open. Perfect. So 
next tutorial, what we're going to do is let's add a sound effect to that door opening. Um, we'll build up a little bit more of our area. And I did say I was going to mention something about uh, the glitch. Obviously, we've seen it before, the gun going into the wall. We're going to sort that out in the next tutorial as well. So until then, guys, thank you very much for watching.